Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to Evening Devotion. I'm glad somebody got a laugh out of that joke. I just told my wife about that, what I said this morning, how I burned the barbecue in the, in the verse we were covering, and uh, she got a giggle out of it too. But uh, life mirrors the Bible. And so it uh, sometimes there's little things like that that pop up that just seem like they fit perfectly as an analogy to that situation. So, this evening, and I'm filming a little early actually, and I'm going to set this to upload for 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, but, um, because we're going to go take a ride tonight. We haven't had a ride out on the country road in a long time, so we're going to go take a ride tonight and watch the sun go down. So we're getting everything done up a little bit early today so we can go enjoy some quiet time and just talk. It's really nice just to be able to sit and just talk without being constantly interrupted by dogs and other people. So, tonight we're going to be reading out of Psalm 35, 3, Say unto my soul, I am thy salvation. If you guys can get a chance to get away and just have some quiet time, it's really nice. I mean, it may be hard to do. It may be a struggle to get away already, but it's nice to have that downtime. Because usually when me and wife go, we talk about the Bible a bunch. It's nice to have that quiet time, whether it's by yourself or somebody you trust. If you can find a way to do it, do it. It's awesome. It's amazing. Just, to, just some downtime. Okay. The whole verse says, Also draw out the spear and stop those who pursue me. Say to my soul, I am your salvation. Great is the Lord. We're starting in verse 1, a psalm of David. Plead my cause, O Lord, with those who strive with me. Fight against those who fight against me. We don't fight against them. The Lord fights for us. Take hold of shield and buckler and stand up for my help. Also draw out the spear and stop those who pursue me. Say to my soul, I am your salvation. Let those be put to shame and brought to dishonor who seek after my life. Let those be turned back and brought to confusion who plot my hurt. That's a lot of people today. Let them be like chaff before the wind. Let the angel of the Lord chase them. Let their way be dark and slippery. and Let the angel of the Lord pursue them. Without cause, they have hidden their net for me in a pit, which they have dug without cause for my life. And that is the truth. We are attacked by people, like on YouTube, all these attacks, these attacks are without cause. People get upset about stuff that I say all the time. I'm talking to a guy right now, waiting for him to respond. Uh, in fact, uh, Stanley has, has been responding to him. And uh, he's upset with me, but it was the scripture that made him mad. Your problem isn't with me, it's with God. Go go talk to him. Ask him about it. Ask him to prove it to you. He'll show you. Trust me, he'll show you. But that's people's problem today. They're, they're mad at us when it has nothing to do with them. All right? Back in 2019, I, I couldn't tell you how many uh, homosexuals would come and attack my channel because of the stuff I was saying from the scripture. And I would ask each one of them, you're so angry at me, but I'm not your problem. It's the word of God that's the problem. And your conviction from that is what's causing you trouble. That's why you're attacking me. I'm the easy target. The problem is you still have to face God. You still have to come to terms with what this word says. Because it is this word that's bothering you, not me. I just happen to be the face. I just happen to be a voice. But I'm irrelevant. It's what the word of God says. That's where the conviction comes from. But they'll always try to, oh, what you said, what you said. What, the scripture I was quoting? Yeah. I didn't say it. God did. I'm just repeating what he said. But by all means, if you would like, if you feel like I need to be attacked, please, please do. It is a blessing to me to know that I'm being attacked for the Lord and being attacked for his name. I, I, I am happy, happy to receive that and, and take that. But in the end, at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, when we're finished with it all, ultimately the word of God will prevail over every one of us, period. For without cause they have hidden their net for me in a pit, which they have dug without cause for my life. Let destruction come upon him ex unexpectedly, and let his net that he has hidden catch himself into that very destruction and let him fall. How interesting. That he, let destruction come upon him unexpectedly? Like sudden destruction? Hmm. Could there be a link here? Maybe. When they say peace and safety? Maybe. And my soul shall be joyful in the Lord. It shall rejoice in his salvation. All my bones shall say, Lord, who is like you? 
delivering the poor from him who is too strong for him. Yes, the poor and the needy from him who plunders him. Fierce witnesses rise up. They ask me things that I do not know. They reward me evil for good to the sorrow of my soul. But as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I humbled myself with fasting, and my prayer would return to my own heart. I paced about as though he were my friend or brother. I bowed down heavily as one who mourns for his mother. He showed love to this person who was his enemy. He was showing love to his enemy. Does not the New Testament tell us to do that? Love your enemies. But in my adversity they rejoiced and gathered together. Attackers gathered against me, and I did not know it. They tore at me and did not cease. With ungodly mockers at feasts, they gnashed at me with their teeth. Lord, how long will you look on? Rescue me from their destructions, my precious life from the lions. I will give you thanks in the great assembly. Notice the great, you know what the great assembly is? It talks about that in Hebrews. I will praise you among many people. Let them not rejoice over me who are wrongfully my enemies, nor let them wink with the eye who hate me without a cause. For they do not speak peace, but they devise deceitful matters against the quiet ones in the land. They also opened their mouth wide against me and said, Aha! Aha! Our eyes have seen it. This you have seen, O Lord. Do not keep silence. O Lord, do not be far from me. I'm going to stop there and jump over to the devotion. Many of us deal with this very same thing today. This is, isn't something that's new to Christianity. This isn't something that's new to believers. This is old. This has been going on since the beginning. We just got done with the book of Job. It was happening to Job in there. So, What does this sweet prayer teach me? It shall be my evening's petition. But first, let it yield me an instructive meditation. The text informs me, first of all, that David had his doubts. For why should he pray, Say unto my soul, I am thy salvation? If he were not sometimes exercised with doubts and fears. Even David doubted. I can tell you that all the men in the Bible had one, at one point doubted. Let me then be of good cheer, for I am not the only saint who has to complain of weakness of faith. If David doubted, I need not conclude that I am no Christian because I have doubts. The text reminds me that David was not content while he had doubts and fears, but he repaired at once to the mercy seat to pray for assurance, for he valued it as much fine gold. We talked about this here just a few days ago, like almost a week ago. Go to the Lord about these things. Take them to him. You're not holding him back or causing him problems by bringing these things to him. Ask him. Ask him and he will show you. I too must labor after an abiding sense of my acceptance in the beloved and must have no joy when his love is not shed abroad in my soul. When my bridegroom is gone from me, my soul must and will fast. Interesting. Song of Solomon. I learn also that David knew where to obtain full assurance. He went to his God in prayer, crying, Say unto my soul, I am thy salvation. Lord, confirm to me that I am saved. Haven't I told you guys? Do that. If you want to know, if you question, if you, got, if you want to know, ask him to show it to you. He will show it. And once you see it, you can't unsee it after that. I must be much alone with God if I would have a clear sense of Jesus' love. Let my prayers cease and my eye of faith will grow dim. Much in prayer, much in heaven. Slow in prayer, slow in progress. I noticed that David would not be satisfied unless his assurance had a divine source. Say unto my soul, Lord, do thou say it? Nothing short of a divine testimony in the soul will ever content the true Christian. Moreover, David could not rest unless his assurance had a vivid personality about it. Say unto my soul, I am thy salvation. Lord, if thou should say this to all the saints, it were nothing unless thou should say it to me. Lord, I have sinned. I deserve not thy smile. I scarcely dare to ask it. But oh, say to my soul, even to my soul, I am thy salvation. Let me have a present, personal, infallible, indisputable sense that I am thine, and that thou 
art mine. Lord, we have sinned. We sin continually. We struggle every day to stay away from it. We struggle every day with doubts and fears. We struggle every day with questions. And at some point we come to a place where we, even when these things start to rise up, we immediately, immediately hate that it has happened. But sometimes we just can't stop it. Sometimes we give in to the temptation. Sometimes we're just tired. I am chief among these. Funny enough, we're all chief among these. The fact that we recognize it, the fact that we see it, tells us something, doesn't it, Lord? And your word confirms this. How amazing that in this day and age, we don't have to take anyone's word for anything. We have the more sure word in the palm of our hands. And so when we question and doubt, Lord, show me your salvation. Say to my soul, I am your salvation. Remind us of this truth. We can go to your word and we can see these promises and we can pray them back to you and remind us of these things so that we walk in confidence, we walk in truth, so that we do not doubt, so that when Satan comes and tempts us, did God really say that? Um, yes, he did, and I don't know why you're interjecting in this conversation. Please see your way out. I'm having a conversation with important people. Thank you. The Lord rebuke you, by the way. We don't have to listen to that anymore. We don't have to endure that anymore. When you're in the middle of your conversation and they come up and interject, excuse me, did the middle of my sentence interrupt the beginning of yours? My apologies, but we're having a conversation. Please step over there and wait your turn. Oh, that's why you're here? No, I'm not interested. Thank you anyway. Go find someone else. And then the people watching will say, well, what a jerk. No, not a jerk. You have no problem shining on them, the Mormons and the Jehovah's Witnesses when they knock on your door. Well, why, why shouldn't I shine on the person or tell them to kick bricks or pound sand that when I already know what they're coming here for? No, no, thank you. I'm not interested. See you. Why would we carry these doubts, Lord, when we have the cure for doubts, the cure for questions, the cure for misunderstandings, the word of God, your word. And as John puts it so eloquently, the word became flesh and dwelt among men. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. This is you in writing. And people are so on this search for you and search for these mystical answers. And it's been right here. But your words never seem to be good enough. Well, for us, your word is perfect. And we revel in it and love it and enjoy it and hunger after it. Give us an uncontrollable desire to read this word and to be in this word every single day. Give us an uncontrollable desire to stop and to pray to you when there's problems. To let you deal with our issues. To, to take them before your throne. To stop holding ourselves in a, in a level of unworthiness that you never laid on us. Oh, we are unworthy. No doubt. We are without any, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Any uh, merits to receive such a wonderful grace you've given us. Or such mercy that you've given us. Or the salvation you've given us. But you have done it anyway. And so while we are not worthy to stand before your throne, you have made us this by the imputation of the worthiness of our Lord Jesus Christ, that we may stand before your throne and lay our petitions at your feet, that we may go and ask in his name, as he commanded us to do. So Father, alleviate our doubts, take away these fears, prove to us those of us that are truly yours, those of us that are saved, prove to us and show us that we are saved so that there won't be any doubts. Prove your word to be true no matter what, beyond a shadow of a doubt, so that when they come accusing and mocking, we don't listen to it. We turn them the other cheek and walk away. Quite literally. And when they say, wait, 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 hold on a minute, and they're laughing with their sneer and their grin, don't you want to have a discussion? No. Why not? Because you've been warned. And you cease to pay attention to it. What more can I do to help you? You've made your decision. Live with it.
because there's no discussion or debate that's going to change your mind. Only the Word of God, only God changing your mind will have an effect on you. Why would I waste my time? And this may sound in, insensitive to many, but Lord, if they know the gospel, which I dare anyone to find somebody who doesn't at least have a basic understanding of it, what else can we say to them? Oh, sure, we can share more. But what else can we say? What else can we debate? What else can we discuss that hasn't been discussed a thousand times over? Nothing. Your word is true, period. End of discussion. Your word is valid. More valid now than I believe it may have ever been in history. End of debate. And we can trust it and trust you because this word is you. Without question. So Lord, prove your word to us that we may stand securely on the foundation of our Lord and his apostles. That we may build upon the secure building of all those before us who have built up this holy tabernacle. So that we may never question these things again or doubt these things again, but instead be so bold that those that see us will understand. And will know, this one is a believer. This one doesn't question and has no doubts. This one, I can tell you, this is a Christian. But that it'll also cause them great conviction. And so that they will get saved. And Lord, if it's your will that their eyes be opened at that time, I pray their eyes are opened. If it's at a later time, then at a later time. Whatever time you have deemed them worthy of. But I pray that this gospel is in every heart. This truth revealed in every mind. So that there will be no doubts. No questions. No more debates. We've debated it to death. It's done. Your word speaks more clearly now than it ever has. And I think that the, the timing of you bringing this Bible into existence in its entirety was very, very, very perfect. Because at this time we need it more than anything. So Lord, I pray that you put an, un, an unhealthy, it's still healthy, but an unhealthy or an uncontrollable hunger for your word. That we may learn it and know it as much as, as we are capable of or has been given to us to do, and so that the Holy Spirit will recall it at a moment's notice when we need it. So when they come, when they accuse, when they mock, we have an answer. Be it your word or be it dead air, whatever you tell us to give them. But that no matter what, we can glorify you. We may glorify you the more. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Guys, thank you for joining me for evening devotion. These are just the things that we're going to have to face today. We can't help it. It is what it is. But we can face these things and give proper answers when they're due. There are times when you will. The proper answer is to stand and debate. Stand and go back and forth with verses. And there are times where when they come and accuse you, turn around and walk away. And when they stop you, wait, wait, hold on a minute. Don't you Christians like to argue this stuff? Would you, don't you know your Bible? Oh, I do, but my Bible says not to have anything to do with someone like you because there's no amount of debating and conversation that will help you. I'm to mark and avoid. I've had people stick their hand out to shake my hand, and I've not given them my hand. And I've told them, no, thank you. I'm not interested in shaking your hand. Oh, you're going to be that way? Yeah, because that's what the Bible tells me to do. I'm not to even greet such a one. The look on their face is pretty shocking. But you know what? Maybe we as Christians need to start talking like that again. Maybe as being people of the way, we should start to address people like that again. To be more consistent with our understanding and our behavior. Now, again, don't get me wrong. There's not, there are times when that's not uh, applicable nowadays because society is so complicated. But there are times when it is. And it can have a profound effect on the person standing before you. We can't do any of that if we struggle with doubt and struggle with fear and struggle with the truth. So first of all, brothers and sisters, get into the word and get into prayer and ask him. I did it. I, I, I flat, In 2019, I was like, Lord, I, I still struggle with doubts here. The only way I can do this ministry effectively with boldness is if I know without a shadow of a doubt that I am yours, that I am saved, 
So, uh, Lord, I ask you to show it to me. So reveal it to me so that I know, so that there's no doubt, because then I can speak with full boldness and confidence in your word and share it with others without questioning, without taking a step back. So that I can effectively do this ministry you've given me and glorify you. And boy, did he ever, that very day, and continuing days after that. I, feel, I believe I did several videos on it. So if you're struggling, ask him. He will reveal it to you. He will show you in his word and prove it to you. And you will know. Because the, the world today is doing everything it can. Well, if you're not speaking in tongues and you're not having dreams and visions, and you're not seeing him standing on the street corner by the 7-Eleven waving at you while you're driving through the intersection, you're not safe. Um, where's that in the Bible? I don't see any verses that say that's qualifications for salvation. The verses I do see say we should have this these series of um, attributes because they're attributes of the Holy Spirit. And I don't see those in a lot of people today calling themselves Christians. Now, like this morning, it may be they're asleep, but that is where true revival will come in. It will revive what already exists. It will revive what is in them. And that happens after the rapture of the church. The rapture of the church is for a select group of individuals, those that are saved now. Those that are his, those that are awake and ready, those that are watching, those that are eagerly waiting for his arrival. But the cruel honesty is, is that the cruel honest truth of this is, is that not everybody is waiting, not everybody is watching, not everybody is looking, not everybody is saved. Don't doubt the Lord and what he told you, don't doubt his word, believe his word. Stay on the narrow path, on the even keel. Walk straight forward. I will be dogmatic about this. A lot of people constantly don't want to be dogmatic. I will be dogmatic about this. Because this is his truth, not mine. So I can be dogmatic. If this is what he said, that's how it's done. End of story. Back when I was at Fort Drum, I was running the snow removal crew. And I had a crew of guys. I had um, 27 guys, 28 guys. And I split them in half and I said, okay. Half of you guys are going to go out and shovel snow. You're going to, this is what you're going to wear to protect your skin. Because it was cold enough. It was well into the negatives. It was cold enough that within 15 minutes, 20 minutes, your skin could start to get frost, frost nip. Frostbite would happen about 10, 15 minutes after that. And so I told him, I said, we're doing 20 minutes out, 20 minutes in. No, I'm good, I'm good. No, this is the standard. This is what we're told to do by First Sergeant and the Commander. You will wear your neck gaiter covering your face. You will have this jacket on we have a, had a green jacket that we that we wore fleece jacket and you guys will have your gloves and you're going to work 20 minutes outside and then you're going to go 20 minutes inside when you're inside you're going to remove your your head cover your hat you're going to remove your neck gaiter and you're going to open up your jacket and you're going to sit there and warm up let let yourself breathe and then 20 minutes back out again until we get all because we had geez five feet of snow until we get all this cleared out and they were fighting me, and I said, no, that's the standard. This is how it is. I was being dogmatic about the instructions I was given. And I could have just let it go, but see, I've had frost snip on my right foot. And if that would have happened to them guys, if they would have been injured by the cold, when I gave, I was given specific instructions by them, I would have been liable, not them. Oh, well, they might have gotten in trouble, but I'd have been liable for it. I would have been the one that would have gotten the write-up, Article 15 or whatever they would have given me for it, or a counseling statement. So I was dogmatic about my instructions. No, this is how we're going to do it. No discussion. And they're like, oh, come on, man. Who's standing before you? I, 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 my rank is specialist, but I'm a sergeant in this in this position. This is what we're going to do. There's no questioning this. this. You do it, that's it. That's an order, period. You don't like it? We can go and have a talk, have a talk with the first sergeant real quick. No problem. So you have to be dogmatic. You, you know, on some things, you must be rock solid, not wavering. Do you want to know these truths? Go into the Bible. Read them and then pray. Ask the Lord, Lord, reveal your truth to me. And he will do this. Ask anybody on this channel who's been here more than a couple of months. They'll tell you because the Lord has done it for them. Ask anybody who has been watching this channel for more than a year, and, you'll, and they'll tell you oh, it's multiple times. Their understanding has grown greatly. 
Yours will too. Whoever you are listening, if you're in that boat, if I've described you in any way, pray to the Lord. Ask him, Lord, show me your truth and your word. And then read his word and watch what happens. He will prove it to you. I can, I can put my personal guarantee on that. Now, this is funny because I don't need to do that. And why would God need me to put my personal guarantee on it? Well, I can tell you from my personal experience, this is what happens. He will do this. He will. But your yes be yes and no be no. He will do this. Because he's done it for me and everybody that's ever asked. Everybody that's ever taken this advice. Everybody that's ever moved like this. He's done this. And we'll continue to do so. Because his will is that we know the truth. And the truth, my brothers and sisters, will always set you free. I love you all very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name. And I'll see you in the next video.